So here are asked to calculate the magnitude and direction, measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, of the resultant force on the structure. So the equations that we need to apply are basically the ones to find a resultant force. So if we start with the x-direction, we know that all the forces in the x-direction have to be equal to the total, the resultant, in the x-direction. So let's go through and apply that equation. So in the x-direction, we have a positive component here. It's going to be 10 cos 20 degrees. This one is only in the y-direction, so it's not going to contribute. And this one has a component that's in the negative x-direction. So it's going to be minus. And we need the sine size of the side of the triangle this time, since it's the opposite. So 3 sine 30. And that has to be equal to the resultant in the x-direction. So if you go and put this in a calculator, it comes out to about 7.90 kilonewtons. So now we need to go through and find the component in the y direction. And together these should be able to give us the magnitude and direction. So same process. So this one here again has a component in the y direction. It's going to be the sine component this time. And it's going downwards. So it's going to be negative. This one is completely in the y direction, which is going to be minus 1. And this one's going up, so it's going to be plus. And this time we need the cos side or the adjacent side of the triangle. So if you go and put this into a calculator, it comes out to negative 1.82 kilonewtons. So all that the negative is telling you is that the resultant of these three forces is actually going downwards. So let's go ahead and draw it. We found this one to be positive, so that would suggest it's in the positive x direction. So 7.90. This one's going down, 1.82. So the resultant is the last side of the triangle, the hypotenuse here. So I'm going to label it as um, FR with these little bars around it to say that it's the, the magnitude. Um, and in a moment, we're also going to try and find the angle, but we'll get to that in a second. So because this is like a right angled triangle, we should be able to use Pythagoras theorem to find the hypotenuse of it. So it's going to be 7.9 squared on this side, plus the 1.82 squared on the other side. So this gives us a magnitude of 8.10 kilonewtons. And if we go and look over here, um, we can see that we have two options still um, to pick for on our multiple choice. So we do need to go through the next step of finding the angle. So the trick here is that it's telling us to measure from the counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So if this is the positive x-axis, counterclockwise is this way. So that's the direction we need to measure the angle from. So let's first get the angle of this triangle here. So I'm going to get this angle in here, which we'll call theta. And we should be able to get it from either sine, cos, or tan, since we actually know all sides. But I'm going to go with tan. So it's going to be tan inverse of the opposite side, which is 1.82, divided by the adjacent side, which is 7.90. So this angle in here is 13 degrees. But remember now we want it to measure from the positive x-axis all the way around. So that's like going from here all the way around to there. So if this angle is 13 degrees and we know a full circle is 360, the difference, which is just this red bit in here, is going to be 360 minus 13. So let's call it alpha. It comes out to 347. Okay, so that's the angle measured from the positive x-axis all the way around. So that's going to be our final answer. So that's A. So that's all there is.